40, dynamite. One evening in early May, I finished my homework and came into the kitchen to find my parents sitting at the table with a man I didn't recognize. He wore a suit and hat, and it wasn't until I saw his stamp that I realized he was a notary. And I remember that mother and daddy, as teachers, were both state employees. Act 10, I asked once a man had left. Months a man had left. Mother nodded. Daddy's face was pinched and pale. Did you list them all, I asked? Yes, said Daddy. Even the Arkansas Council of Human Relations? Of course, I'm a member. Daddy got up and left the room. Mother and I looked at each other. Will he lose his job, I asked? No, I hope not, said Mother. Then she went to the sink and started washing dishes from dinner. The next day was Tuesday, and I was, and I was meeting Liz at the Rock Crusher. She wasn't there when I arrived. I waited a while, then I put my satchel on my big black on the big rock and started to climb the oak tree. It wasn't as scary this time. I concentrated and held real tight. I could almost do it without counting. Almost. I was halfway up when I heard her voice call out. Hey Marley, I was so surprised I nearly fell off the tree. I looked up, there was Liz looking down at me. Sorry, she said. I didn't mean to startle you. I didn't know you were up there. You climbed out without watching me this time? Yeah, I guess I did. Liz grinned at me. You're in a good mood, I said, pulling myself up to the branch she was sitting on. Yeah, said Liz. Curtis asked me the baseball game this weekend. We had a great time. Shirley was there too, and she just about fell out the bleachers when she saw I was there with the ninth grader. Wow, I said. But the truth was, I was worried. If things were going so much better for Liz, how much longer would she need me? Bring anything to eat, Liz asked. I got some apples, I said, but I left my satchel on the rocks. Never mind, Liz said. No, I'll go get them. I started to climb down. It was a long way. I was jumping down from the lowest branch when I heard something, like someone biting into an apple. Hello, little mute girl. JT and Red were sitting on the stone top table. My satchel was open, and they were eating my apples. I was glad I was on the ground because it suddenly felt so weak. I didn't think I had been able to hold on to branches. We followed you, said JT. Weirdos. I wasn't sure if they knew Liz was here or not. She was a long way up. I wasn't wasn't sure if she could hear him, but I had to warn her not to come down. Why, JT and Red, I said as loud as I could without yelling. What a surprise to see you here. Where's your friend, Red asked. I came here by myself. Why were you up in the tree, JT asked. I was looking at the view, I said. Red went over to the tree and looked up. My heart started beating furiously, but the branches were thick with spring growth. Sure there's not anyone else up there? I think... I I would have seen them if they were. I held my breath and willed Liz to be silent. I recited the time table myself until finally Red looked away from the tree and turned his piercing blue eyes on me. I heard you stop doing my brother's homework, said Red. JT was eating my apple intently without looking up. Suddenly I wasn't just scared, I was angry too. You going to beat me up, Red? I asked. You going to beat up a girl? Red didn't answer. Anything in the bag? He asked JT finally. JT rummaged inside, $2. He handed the money to his brother. Something fell out of the tree. We all turned and looked. An acorn. Then another one. And the sound of something or someone coming down the branches. No, no, Liz, stay in the tree. I have it under control. I don't care if they say what's left in my birthday money. What was that? Red asked. I shrugged, my heart being so hard. I was sure they could see it through my sweater. JT and Red walked over the tree and looked up. You see anything, asked Red? Nothing, said JT. I'm going to climb up and make sure. At that moment, two or more acorns fell. No! J Red grabbed the branch about to swing himself up. When a squirrel jumped down, spooked and jumped on Red's head. Ah! Red screamed. Get it off me! He felt so ground. JT was laughing too hard to do anything. He was just a squirrel, I said. I went over and picked up my satchel. I'm leaving. You two can stay and play with the rodents if you want. I turned and started walking. Praying they would follow me. After a moment, they did. I know you're a race mixer, said Fred. We'll catch you at one of these days. I didn't say a word. I guess it made him mad because he didn't respond. Because he grabbed my satchel from my shoulder and tossed it into the forest. I took reciting all 25 prime numbers under 100, but I didn't get angry. I didn't say a word. I, just, I left the path. I went, I went to my bag. I it had fallen into a ditch full of weeds and tree roots and ferns. On the way back to the path, I tripped on a rock and fell down. Ow! JT came over to me. You all right, Marley? Why do you care, I asked. But he held out his hand to help, and I took it. That's when I realized it wasn't a rock I tripped over. It was in a, a box, an old box, labeled dynamite. 
Wow, CGT. Red, come look at this. Red crashed the underbush, his boots much better suited for trapping through the weeds than my saddle shoes. Dynamite, he breathed. Your girl's good luck after all. GT reached into and took the lid off the box. Don't touch it, I screamed. You want to kill all of us? Don't you know nothing? Dynamite's stable. It won't go off unless there's a charge of some sort. Besides, you tripped over it. If there's anyone likely to kill us, it was you. I stood there and watched as he pulled the lid up. There's a whole layer of dynamite inside. Nine or ten sticks, he whistled. Must have been here since this place was working for you. Tonight, we'll have some fun for sure. What do you say? I'm saying, said Red. We'll find your little friend and show her whole family what we think of blanks who try to pass. Red, said GT. Daddy's right, said Red. You are a little coward. JT said nothing. Give me your bag, said Red. I didn't move. I said, give me your bag. I just stared at him. Red came over and grabbed it off my shoulder. What are you doing? I yelled. We, said Red, are taking this dynamite. Dynamite home. He started placing the sticks of dynamite in my satchel. JT, he barked. You gonna help me or not? JT glanced at me. Then his brother. He started placing... Sorry, guys. My book is... My thing... Ugh. Ah! He started placing the dynamite in the bag. I turned and walked out. Slowly at first, I figured if I ran, it'd be tempting to follow them, like dogs after a fox. Also, my knee hurt, and my tights were ripped. I have to tell Mother I lost my school satchel, and we'd have to buy a new one. I didn't dare go go back if I found out Liz was still there. Hopefully, she snuck down, and I already made it out of another way. I stumbled home, unsure of what to do. I have to tell my father about the dynamite. I have to warn Liz. We thought we were safe at the rock pressure because it was so isolated, but clearly we were wrong. When I got home, Betty Jean was waiting for me in the kitchen. She looked over at me, from the twigs on my hair to my rib skirt to my bloody knee. Finally, she waved a piece of paper in the air. I have a message for you, she said. Then she handed me the paper. From your friend Lisa. I took the paper and read it. I'm home. I'm fine. Call me. Thank you, Betty Jean. That was, a, that was one thing off my chest. Liz was okay. <clears throat> had to give her a quick call and jump in the shower. And then I noticed Betty Jean was still looking at me. Her arms crossed. I frowned at her face. And I started to think it wasn't, I wasn't going to get that, wasn't going to get that shower. I don't think I've ever met your friend Lisa, have I? No, I said quietly. I don't think so. Funny thing is, said Betty Jean, her, sounded, her voice sounded awful familiar. I couldn't figure out who it reminded me, reminded me of at first. But then it came to me, Elizabeth Fullerton. She's in youth group with Chris, with Curtis. Nice girl, pretty, sometimes goes by the name of Liz. Oh no, she knew. There was a glass of iced tea and the piece of pecan pie on the kitchen table. Now sit down, Marley, and start talking.